Hi, this is the first tutorial in my series on complex numbers. Now suppose you had to work out the square root of minus 16. If you did it on a calculator, you'd most probably find that it gives you a maths error. And why is that? Well, obviously there's not two numbers exactly the same that multiply together to give us minus 16. But we can have a work around on this. Look, suppose we were to let say i equal the square root of minus 1. You might find some authors use the letter j instead of i. But I'm going to use i throughout my tutorials. So if we let i equal the square root of minus 1, then when it comes to working out the square root of minus 16, we can think of this as the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of minus 1. And we should know that if you've got the square root of two or more values being multiplied together, this is the same as the square root of each one of them being multiplied together. So that's the root of 16 multiplied by the root of minus 1. And we know the root of 16 that's 4. The root of minus 1 has been defined as i, so we've got 4i. So suppose you had the square root then say of minus 36, what would that be? Well again we can think of this as root of 36 multiplied by the root of minus 1. In other words 6i. And suppose you get, say, the square root of minus 5. What's that going to be? Well, we think of this as root 5 multiplied by the root of minus 1. Now you can't square root 5 as an exact value, so we just have to leave it as root 5. So it would be root 5i. Now we can use these ideas when it comes to solving quadratic equations. Suppose for instance we had the quadratic equation x squared minus 6x plus 10 equals 0. In the usual way we'd most probably try and see if we could factorise it. And if it didn't factorise, and this one doesn't factorise, go on to say use the quadratic formula. Remember if you've got an equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then we can use this formula to solve for x. So if we were to use the quadratic formula for this, we'd therefore have x equals minus b, so b being minus 6 is going to give us 6, plus or minus the square root then of b squared, so that's going to be minus 6 all squared, minus 4 times the a value, which is 1, times the c value, which is 10, and all of that is divided by 2a, 2 times the 1, so it would be 2. And if we work that out we get 6 plus or minus the square root then of, well we've got 36 here, minus 40, which gives us the square root then of minus 4. And that will be all divided by 2. And if we got something like this, where the b squared minus 4ac turns out to be a negative number, we would have found in the past that we would have had no solutions, no real values for x. And if we had drawn a graph of say y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10, what would we have seen? We would have seen a graph crossing the y-axis at 10, it would have been a parabola, a u-shaped parabola, but it wouldn't have intersected the x-axis. No roots. But now that we can work out a value for the square root of minus 4, just like we did over here, we could carry this on. We could say that this is equal to 6 plus or minus and treat minus 4 as 4 times minus 1. So we have the root of 4 multiplied by the root of minus 1 and all of that is over 2. So we have 6 plus or minus 2i all divided by 2 
and we could divide both of these terms on the top by the 2 and get 3 plus or minus i. Something of the form a plus bi. Now whenever you get anything of this particular format it's called a complex number. The first part is called the real part and the last part, the part attached to the eye, is called the imaginary part. So we have two complex numbers here. The roots of our quadratic equation are called imaginary roots. They are 3 plus i and 3 minus i. So when you get something like this then they're called complex numbers. Any complex number then has the form a plus bi. The a part is the real part and the b part is the imaginary part. Now I've got a few questions that you might like to try. And number three is special because it's a cubic equation. So you're going to need to factorize this and that will be using the factor theorem. If you're unfamiliar with the factor theorem or just need a bit of revision on that, just go on my website and look for the tutorials on the factor theorem. Okay, well I'll give you a few moments to try these, pause the video and come back when ready and I'll work through the work solutions for them. Well, welcome back if you had a go. Let's just see how you got on then. Well, the first one, x squared plus 49 equals 0, should be fairly straightforward. What we've got then to do is subtract 49 from both sides, so therefore x squared would equal minus 49. And therefore, if we take the square root of minus 49, don't forget it will be plus or minus being an equation, square root of minus 49, what's it going to be? Well, we can think of this as root 49 then multiplied by the root of minus 1. In other words, plus or minus 7i. And for 2, x squared plus 2x plus 5 equals 0. This doesn't factorise, so we'd need to use the quadratic formula. So if we use the quadratic formula, x equals minus b, so it's going to be minus 2, plus or minus the square root then of b squared, so that'd be 2 squared, minus 4 times a, the 1, times the c value, 5. And that's all divided by 2a, so that'd be divided by 2. And that gives us minus 2 plus or minus the square root then of 4 minus 20. In other words, square root of minus 16, all divided by 2. And that gives us minus 2 plus or minus square root of minus 16 is going to be 16 times the root of minus 1. In other words, the square root of 16 is 4 and then square root of minus 1 is i. And all that is divided by 2. And we can split this up now. We can say minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1 and the 4 divided by 2 gives us the plus or minus 2i. So the real part here is minus 1, the imaginary part is either plus 2 or minus 2. It's well worth noting the real part in this one was 0, okay? But the imaginary part was either plus 7 or minus 7. Okay, well let's see how you got on with number 3, this cubic equation. Remember, to solve this, you've got to first of all guess a value of x which makes this equal to 0. And if you try x equals 1, you've got 1 here, minus 5, plus 9, minus 5, and that comes to 0. So x equals 1 is a solution, which means by the factor theorem that x minus 1 must have been a factor. And that means that x minus 1 must have been multiplied by another factor, a quadratic factor, to give us x cubed minus 5x squared plus 9x minus 5. And you can get this factor by either dividing x minus 1 into this, or you could just do it simply by sight. 
And if you do it by sight, it's going to be an x squared here to give us the x cubed. And it's going to be a plus 5 down this end, so that minus 1 times plus 5 gives us the minus 5. Now you can guess what this is going to be, this x term in here. So it gives us the minus 5x squared and the 9x. It's going to turn out to be minus 4x. You can check it out that it will give you the minus 5x squared and the 9x if you multiply this out. OK, well assuming that you've got that factorised, then in the usual way, either x minus 1 is going to equal 0 or the quadratic factor x squared minus 4x plus 5. That's going to equal 0. This one leads to x equals 1. But for the other one, we're going to need to use the quadratic formula because it doesn't factorise. So x equals minus b, so that's going to be 4 plus or minus the square root then of b squared, so that's going to be minus 4 all squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is the 5, all divided by 2a, in other words, just simply 2. And working this out gives us 4 plus or minus the square root then of 16 minus 20, in other words, minus 4, and that's all divided by 2. So we end up with 4 plus or minus 2i, and that's divided by 2, giving us 2 plus or minus i. So what we have in this particular question is one real root and two imaginary roots, 2 plus i and 2 minus i. It's interesting to note also that if you were to sketch the graph of y equals x cubed minus 5x squared plus 9x minus 5, it would be a graph that crosses the y-axis at minus 5. There's one real root at x equals 1 and two imaginary roots. It ends up looking something like this. Coming up then through the minus 5 on the y-axis through the 1 on the x-axis, there's a slight bend in the curve for this one and then it carries on up. But the point is that there is just one real root and two imaginary roots, 2 plus i and 2 minus i. OK, well, I hope you found this tutorial useful as an introduction then to complex numbers. What I'm going to be doing in the next tutorial is showing you how to do addition and subtraction of complex numbers, and then we'll move on to multiplication and division. OK, well, that brings us then to the end of this particular tutorial.